Don't let anger control you. Take a deep breath and relax. Hi, I'm Father Cedric Bazania, the host of Live With Passion. I'm so glad that you tuned into the program. I am producing a series, this series, and I call it Real Life, Real Issues. And I'm trying to get a grasp on the different issues that people are going through, such as impatience or loneliness or anxiety. And today's program, today's episode is about anger. Let me read to you. This is from the letter to the Ephesians. This is chapter four. And we read, this is Paul writing, and he says, be angry, but don't sin. That's telling. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't give any opportunity to the devil. The number one reason why marriages fail, get this, it's not money problems. It's not arguments or lack of communication per se or disagreements. It's anger at each other. They can't stand the way they are or the way they're behaving, behaving they're upset with each other. So anger is rampant in marriages, unfortunately, and it leads to a lot of divorces. Now, as I'm filming this, there's a lot of anger going on in our culture because of what just happened. It happened sometime back. We all remember what happened with George Floyd and he was murdered really by a policeman up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. That led to protests. That led to uh, people being not just angry, enraged. Some, unfortunately, some violence happened. People got killed. Talk about anger kills. And there, were, there was looting. There was all kinds of chaos in our society. So we all saw that in the news. And whatever side you stood on, whether it was against racism, and we all are, or perhaps you were for the police, and you were angry about what was happening. Bottom line is there was anger. And then of course the pandemic and that caused a lot of anger in our culture and society. I saw all kinds of different scenes happening. For example, the Michigan state Capitol. Remember each state opened at its own pace. They all had their own legislation about what to do during the pandemic. Well, Michigan had a lot of rules and regulations about reopening. Well, at the Michigan State Capitol, a man went in there legally holding an assault rifle. Talk about anger. Then in another state, I saw a woman who owned a hair salon who was locked up in jail because she refused to close her hair salon. Subsequently, she was released. But you could see the anger she had on her face. Then. I saw a woman all bloodied. She was a salesperson in a store who accosted somebody or at least told somebody because they weren't wearing a mask during the pandemic and she ended up getting beat up. And then of course, I saw a brave nurse standing there before the Capitol steps as this man in a tattoo came against her and railed at her and she was basically standing there peacefully and calmly while this guy was all angry in her face. So these were some of the images we had during the pandemic. Our culture, our society full of rage and anger and embittered because of what's going on. Racism, the virus, pandemic, all the different uh, facets of society. I'm thinking about politics right now. <laughs> I have never seen a nation so divided as with our political situation right now. Now, whether you're Democratic or whether you're Republican or you're independent or maybe not even a voter, there's such anger. If I were to tell you what my political leanings were, half of you would donate and the other half of you would switch the channel. <laughs> so I understand there's a lot of anger about many different things. I'm just trying to identify it. And, try to get people in touch with it. And the bottom line is, is this. Now I'm going to say this in as strong way as I can. Let me use my megaphone. The world is imperfect. There is trouble. 
you will not agree with everything that's happening in the world. So in other words, one of the reasons why people get angry is because of imperfection. They're perfectionistic, and when they don't get things their way, they get all upset. Another reason, these are the roots of anger. Another reason why people get angry is because they grew up in an angry home. I call that family of origin. Their parents were angry, their relatives were angry, they're just mimicking what they saw. So you can get angry for many different reasons, and there's all kinds of roots, but the bottom line is, is we all feel that feeling of frustration when things don't go our way, whether it be because of racism or other injustices, whether it be because of the pandemic or politics or you name it, things aren't going right in your own life. So you have to understand, Paul writes this in the letter to the Romans, that creation was subjected to futility. I hope you get that. Creation, God created, but he subjected it, didn't want it to be this way originally. Originally it was a pleasure garden, Eden. But when we sinned, he subjected it to futility. So what is futility? Things don't go your way. Things don't happen the way that you want them to happen. There are injustices, there's violence, there's death, there's suffering. Futility. We all are familiar with it, but one day a new world is coming. But right now, I just want you to understand that we are in a futile world and things don't happen the way we want to. So the Bible tells us, all right, be angry, but don't sin. And this is a major point I want you to get. That was Ephesians 4.26. Anger is not a sin in and of itself. Anger is an emotion. It's energy something that comes out of us. Just because you're angry and you feel frustrated, you're not sinning. So that's why the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. And here's where it becomes sinful. It's your response, your reaction to the feeling, to the emotion of anger. That's why you got to learn, and this is what self-control is all about, you got to learn how to manage your emotions. And if you're not able to manage your anger, you're going to have problems. I remember I watched a movie years ago it was called Anger Management. It starred Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. And it was hilarious because I remember one scene when Jack Nicholson got into a problem on the highway in New York. People were passing him and yelling at him because they made him stop right on the highway. And he had to be able to handle his anger and not strike back. And it was hilarious because we've all been in traffic situations where we get upset and we get angry and we have to manage our anger. So that's the key. Anger is a problem when you overreact, when you feel the feeling and you allow it to make you abuse somebody that you love or start swearing. If you ever want to be angry, take up the sport of golf. <laughs> I've been an avid golfer now for many years and I'll tell you, even the best golfers, I'm talking the pros, they can be playing at Pebble Beach, the most beautiful place and throw in their clubs because the ball's not going where they want it to go. And that's called futility. So even the best of golfers feel that. So be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. You have to try to manage it. I found out something about anger. Anger can actually lead to some good things. For example, had a neighbor, the barking dog, and that dog would bark during the day, cute dog, I think it was a, a Labrador retriever, it was a black dog, I jumped, I kind of looked over the fence one day and I saw it. Well, the thing started barking at five in the morning. Five in the morning, I'm laying in bed hearing this dog barking. So, I don't recommend this, but you know, my, my anger, I was so upset, I finally went over to the neighbors and they don't know who we are and we don't know them. But I finally went over there. This is what anger made me do. But I went over there in a nice way. It was right before Christmas. And I took over some truffles, some chocolate truffles. <laughs> Maybe this will work if you're having a barking dog. And I took it over to her and I said, hey, I'm Father Cedric. Nice to meet you. And I go, I want to give you a little gift. And by the way, I happened to notice that your dog has been barking at four, four, 
5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be mean, but is there any way you can kind of, you know, be careful not to let your dog bark? Well, anyway, long story short, the dog doesn't bark at 5 in the morning anymore. He barks still, but at more appropriate times of day. But my point is, it was my anger that, that drove me to do something about my situation. So anger can be good, as long as you're managing it and not letting it drive you crazy. I think about how mothers against drunk driving started. Mad, another word for anger, mad. This woman's daughter was killed by a drunk driver. And instead of just raging and being uh, all bent out of shape all the time about it, this woman decided to do something about it. And she created Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And because of her proactivity, because of her anger channeled in a right way, how many thousands of lives have been saved by drunk drivers because of the legislation they've brought? And they've done such good in society. I got angry about my weight. And this, this is another thing that anger can do. It can drive you to lose weight. I was gaining weight and then staying about the same. No matter how much I worked out, I wasn't losing any weight. I talked to a friend of mine, and he was talking about sugar, how sugar, take, the sugar intake is, when you take too much, it, it really messes up with your system. I got angry because I was addicted to sugar. And I was addicted to eating sugar every day, a certain amount of it, and my body metabolism wasn't working. And I got so angry, I cut out sugar. It's amazing. I dropped 10 pounds. I dropped 10 pounds. And I didn't really even work that hard to do it. So my point is, I'm not trying to give diet lessons and how you stop neighbor's dogs from barking. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you about how anger can drive you to actually do good things. So this, it's, not, it's an emotion. It's not necessarily bad. That's why the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. It's not a sin to be angry. It is one of the seven deadlies, if you know anything about Catholicism. Anger, envy, gluttony. Actually, the word I think they use is wrath. So it's one of the seven deadlies when we allow it to dictate our actions. So please be careful about that. So let's talk a little bit about anger. As I said, the world is not perfect. It can be really frustrating. And I live in community, and I know that. When you live with people, people can get on your nerves and get angry. For example, there's one of the guys in our community. I live in Houston in a community, about five, six guys. And one of the guys, after eating, he doesn't clean up his plate. He doesn't clean up after eating. And he just leaves them. Another guy leaves the lights on in the kitchen all the time. And I have to go by, and every time I could turn the lights off, and you know, trying to save money, trying to save electricity, energy. Then during the pandemic, during the social distancing problems, we were told not to get within six feet of anybody. One of our guys is out in the parking lot hugging people. And I see him and we go in and we have masks together. We share from the same cup and he's jeopardizing the community. So my point is that I can't help but get angry at these different things. And I find myself wanting to go, ah, so we all have people in our life that upset us and make us angry, and it's all different things. So you have to be careful about how you handle things. Remember, be angry, but sin not. And what is anger? Well, anger is a feeling. As I said, it's an emotion. It's energy. And it's a feeling of frustration because things aren't right. Things aren't perfect in your life. Things aren't going the way you want them to go. And you know how water is? You know, water boils at 212 degrees. I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson said that we all boil at different degrees. Water boils at 212, but some people boil with just a little frustration. Other people, it takes a lot of frustration to boil. So what's your boiling point? Some people fly off at the handle and get enraged very easily. They don't know how to manage their emotions. They have very little self-control. But other people, you know, it takes a lot to get them angry. So just want you to get in touch with your anger. That's a, a really important thing. Some people have little self-control. I remember I had a friend in high school, and 
this young man, we were playing golf one time and he missed the putt and he took his club and swung it so hard he hit the grass, not in the fairway, not in the rough, on the green. Took a big divot right out of the green. He was so mad because he missed the putt. Well, he got found out. The owner of the golf course found out that, that he did that. He was banned from that golf course all because of one moment of anger. And then, of course, I heard about a road rage incident in my home state of Massachusetts where this man got hooked up on a car. It was a road rage and could have got killed. Remember what I said about the book? There's a book called Anger Kills. And the book is by Williams and Williams. It's a classic, I think. Anger kills. And one of the ways that it kills is by people killing each other because they're angry. But they're, they were talking about your blood pressure goes up, your stress level goes up, uh, you can get uh, hardening of the arteries, you can get heart disease, and all kinds of different physiological reactions happen in your body because of anger. So be careful not to stuff your anger and be careful not to be consumed by your anger. It can eat you up. Remember that song by Don Henley? He had a song out and he, he would sing, don't let your anger eat you up inside. And that's exactly what can happen. And you gotta let it go. You can't just let it possess you. So I had an incident that happened to me one time that I just wanted to share with you. It's kind of an, a humorous incident, but Kroger's is a store a grocery store that we have right near our home, probably about two miles away. So I went shopping and I just wanted to get a couple bananas and I wasn't dressed as a priest, just dressed in my shorts and a golf shirt and nobody knew who I was and there I am in Kroger's, I got a couple bananas and had some cookies, maybe potato chips, whatever. And uh, I go to the self-checkout line. There are four little stations where you can do the self-checkout. Well, it was really crowded. All four of them were taken. And I noticed that there was a, an elderly man and a teenager standing there. There's no formal line, by the way. There's just four stations, and they, they don't say line starts here. You just kind of see what's going on. You realize that those two guys are in front of me. So I stood next to the guys, and I have my bananas and have my other little things. And as we're standing there, one of the stations opened up. And right when it opened up, this woman <laughs> with a cart full of stuff, cuts right in front of us and goes over to the station. And when she did that, <laughs> you know, the anger, the frustration in me starts, because we were waiting for that station and she just cut right in front of us. So I look at the two guys and they looked at me and I sensed, sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks, I sensed the Holy Spirit say, Cedric, just let it go, don't say anything. But I was angry. She did that to us. We were waiting. So I said, excuse me. And she looked at me. I said, excuse me, we were waiting for that. And she goes, no, you weren't. You were waiting for that one. This is the one that opened up. And that's when I knew I was going to have a problem because she was speaking back to me right away. And I said, no, that's not how it works. There's a line here and we were waiting for that station. And right at that moment, she turns to me and she goes, Sir, I hope you choke on your bananas. <laughs> and I went, that's when the Holy Spirit said, Cedric, I told you not to say anything. <laughs> and I said, oh no, now I'm in a dog fight with a woman in Kroger's over nothing. I was letting my anger control me. So all of a sudden, this man comes out of nowhere. It was her husband. And he walks over to me. Now I'm thinking to myself, Oh no, I can see the headlines in the Houston Chronicle. Priest gets into fight with man at Kroger's over bananas. And I'm thinking, oh no, now what's gonna happen? He walks over to me and much to my surprise, he shakes my hand. And he goes, sir, he goes, I'm sorry. She doesn't mean it. Please just let it go. And I said, wow. And I'm thinking to myself, sir, I, I didn't say it out loud, but I'm saying, sir, I don't know what you did in your past to deserve her, but it must've been something pretty bad. Well, anyway, he goes over to her and she's upset and I'm upset and it took a while. Finally, they checked out and they left and I'm thinking to myself, Cedric, you should have just let it go. Some fights aren't worth fighting. Some battles aren't worth fighting. Don't let your anger control you. And I'll say the same thing to you. Don't let your anger control you. Be angry, but sin not. Because you never know that guy that walked up to me 
He could have had a gun. He could have wanted to fight. He could have got me into big trouble. So you just don't know. And especially if you're driving a car and somebody cut you off, it can be, remember what I said, anger kills. So let's talk a little bit more about it because people are feeling angry all the time and it's happening all over the place. I remember the story about Moby Dick. Remember Herman Melville's Moby Dick? This captain of a whaling ship when he was a young man gets his leg bit off by this great white whale. And for the rest of his life now, it was a terrible accident, but now for the rest of his life, he is enraged and he's obsessed about getting this whale back. Finally, years later, Captain Ahab gets his chance. After searching for him for years, he finds Moby Dick. He's got a harpoon in his hand. And with all the anger and rage that all these years brought, he throws the harpoon into Moby Dick. Moby Dick goes down. Unbeknownst to him, the rope to the harpoon was around his leg, his other leg. When the Moby Dick went down, he went down with Moby Dick. The point of the story, you got to let go of your anger. Your anger is going to kill you. Anger kills. So what do we do about anger? About anger? How do we handle it? Anger can be a horrible emotion. In fact, I wanted to tell you a story really quickly about I was preaching in Florida and this pastor tells me about this woman and they were a married couple actually. They're in their 60s and they got into this fight. Remember what I said about marriages, that anger is the number one reason why marriages split up. Well, they get into this big fight and they were going at it with each other. The man ends up having a heart attack. Anger kills and he dies right on the floor. She had to live for the rest of her life with that image of her husband dying right in front of her. And the last thing that he saw was her yelling at him. So please, be angry, but sin not. Don't let it eat you up inside. Don't let it destroy your marriages. Try to manage it. Anger is very real. So how do we get a handle on it? How do we handle this emotion? First of all, you've got to admit it. <laughs> it's kind of like the 12 step programs. When you have a problem with alcohol, you've got to admit it. That's the first step. Most people are angry and they don't even realize that they're angry. They don't they're not in touch with their emotions. So first of all, you just realize it. And then realize that you've got a choice. You don't have to fly out. You don't have to just respond. You don't have to just, as I said, sin not or sin. You have a choice. Count to 10. <laughs> For some people, count to 100. Remember what I said at the beginning of the program. Take a deep breath and relax. Don't let anger dictate your emotions. Don't let them dictate your actions. Take a deep breath. Respond. Don't overreact. And then an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What do I mean by that? When I go driving in Houston, I don't just hop in my car anymore and go. I tell myself beforehand, Cedric, there's going to be traffic. You're probably not going to get there as fast as you want to go. Take your time. Realize there's going to be traffic. And so we live in an imperfect world, and you have to understand that. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Realize, remember what I said about the megaphone, realize that there is futility in our world, and it's imperfect. Now, that shouldn't lead you to despair. It's being realistic. And when you're realistic, you won't be as angry. Remember one of the problems with, or one of the causes of anger is perfectionism. You think you're going to have things your way all the time, and when things aren't perfect, you get angry. So be realistic. And then, as I said, anger is a channel. It's an energy that you can channel. Talked about mothers against drunk driving. One of the ways that you can actually overcome an addiction is by getting angry. Your anger can lead you into a recovery program. That you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Same with habitual sins. Same with habits, bad habits. Get angry about it and do something about it. That's what Jesus did in the temple. There was an injustice going on. They were selling all these things and he went and turned the tables over. 
Zeal for your house consumes me in a good way. That's how you fight injustice. Mothers against drunk driving. You fight racism, not by rioting, but by protesting. So let's wind all this up. Anger isn't a sin, it's an emotion. But its overreactions can lead you to sin. So the Bible tells us, be angry, but don't sin. Don't overreact. Manage your emotions. You can do it. Don't let anger kill you. And by the grace of the Holy Spirit, I hope you'll take that energy and turn it into good. Don't just live, live with passion. I received an email from a woman. She said, Father, thank you for your programs. Because of your TV programs, I went to confession for the first time in 35 years. Wow. That's exactly what I'm about with Live With Passion, trying to help people to come to God in a deep, personal way. Now, I've been in the confessional for 30 years as a priest, and the number one thing I hear from people is, Father, I'm angry. The spiritual life is about managing your emotions. It's about self-control, whether it's anger, whether it's lust, whatever it is. And I wrote a book called, You Can Change. Underline the word can. You can change. You don't have to stay stuck. And I want to help you with anger, with lust, with forgiveness, whatever it is, whatever issue you're dealing with. Whenever you buy my books or the CD and DVD of this series and make a donation, that so supports me. Catholic priests with a vow of poverty trying to reach out around the world with a gospel message, with the power and grace of the Holy Spirit, with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So thank you in advance for your donations. Thank you for buying my resources. Just call that number. Write me at that address. Go to my website. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't just live, live with passion. Everyone experiences anger, anxiety, impatience, and loneliness at times. We need to grow in love and be ready for the last judgment. These are real issues. In this life-changing series, Brother Cedric gets to the heart of these issues and offers real solutions. Right now, Simply call or go online and order Series 760, DVD or CD, as well as the book Father talked about. People everywhere are being transformed by Father Cedric's teachings. You too can experience God's help in your life. Every purchase supports Father Cedric in his God-given mission to touch lives and save souls. Father Cedric is a Catholic priest with a professed vow of poverty. Be assured that the money from your purchases will be used to produce an air live with passion. To purchase these inspiring resources, simply call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. A kind operator will help you. Or write Father Cedric at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024. Or log on to frcedric.org and order online simple, easy, and secure. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Together, we are touching lives and saving souls.